Yeah. 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 All right. All right. Uh, welcome to the Community Service Advisory Board meeting Thursday, November 16th, 2023. Um, we'll call this meeting to order. And it's 603. Uh, attendance, uh, we'll do it verbally. Uh, Emily will be taking minutes uh, after watching the recording. Hopefully, uh, I'm Mark Dillon, current chair. Good Roger Shabbat. Trish Brigham. Rick Murphy. Amanda Doherty. Great. And of course, Todd Seuss is here. Our liaison? Yeah. Uh, staff liaison. Staff liaison. Okay. Very good. <laughs> All right. And Alex, and, Alex. and Alex Marshall is here. Yeah, hello. Okay. Howdy. Hi, Alex. We do have a forum. Perfect. Uh, all right. We'll uh, move to approve last meeting minutes. Hopefully, everyone had a chance to look at those. Yeah, the copy of Fund too. No. Yeah. Take a motion to approve in a second. So moved. Trish. Roger, second. Any comments, questions? Seeing none, cool. all in favor, it's unanimous. Thank you. All right, we'll open up for citizens' comments. If there is anyone online. Thank you. Just me as the host. All right, mm. we will close citizen comments. Yeah. All right, on to item five. Uh, CSAB recommendations. Riley. Group discussion on items to prioritize the community services. So this was one of the items we left off last time. We kind of um, shared the report with council. Um, a lot of stuff to do. Yeah. on the list so Emily had put it as an agenda item just to rehash kind of the conversation around um, what you guys want to have for a priority moving forward and then well, obviously that'll drive some of the work that we do to support that um, you know just the two big items that I think you guys um, and, and again chime in I'm just trying to recap this in my head the two big items that you guys had talked about last time and one of them is item six tonight is to talk about the beach environment. Yeah. Uh, and the other one was the community center and, and that's that's moving. So Alex can kind of give an update there. Um, and then a lot of the other stuff that were on your list, I, I should have made copies of the list, but it was uh, sports community center, maintenance of current facilities, beach environment, uh, volunteer recruitment and community partner development, uh, and then program development in the areas that um, we were challenged or lacking in. Um, and I know that, in the, and I won't read all the, the three to five years, but we did receive comments from council at the time about trail development and connect connectivity. You know, they would like to see as at a higher priority with, you know, going with the transportation um, work that's going on now, as well as eventually this open space that's we really need to bring up on the agenda tonight. Um, so those were the big things that you guys identified that you had presented to council. Um, I will tell you, I have asked, and he has done it, Steve Kramer, our rec manager. He's reached out to all the parent teacher groups of each school, and he's going to be setting up meetings with this winter for us to go sit down, chat, kind of get those silos broken a little bit. So we are moving on that to kind of figure out how it helps us with marketing and outreach and maybe some partnerships. So that is in motion as far as trying to work on that goal. Um, we will be um, starting to work on new programming development. We did just hire our, um, she's about two months in, um, Rebecca. She's our new, we changed it to um, active adult coordinator. Uh, Cindy Tobias, our previous senior coordinator, uh, took a new position. Um, and so when we had the chance to change that, we changed the title to Active Adult. And um, she's spending most of her time right now. She's doing some surveying with the 
the 55 kind of plus communities saying what, what they like, don't like, where they don't feel supported. Um, so she can kind of stabilize that. She's a really good communicator. Um, and then once she feels comfortable, we'll start tackling some of these other kind of weaknesses that we have in that kind of 25 to 40 range of programming that we don't do really anything very, very minimal. Um, and uh, we've all, we're pretty close with our child care staff part time. Uh, we need a couple more site supervisors. Um, so the full time staff's doing that. And then once they kind of get stabilized, then we can start looking at that kind of zero to seven range program because that's kind of their bread and butter. So um, just trying to move forward without over committing staff and, and mm -hmm. bogging them down. So really, that's kind of the two pieces um, there, you know, as far as you had mentioned, right, maintenance of current facilities, I think that'll be a big conversation for our January meeting. Um, when I start putting budgets together and looking at our, you know, the parks and facilities plan and what we have tackled and where we kind of want to prioritize the funding that we do and how that, so I'll be leaning on you guys to help me. I'll be working on that next month. So then I can have that ready for your January meeting and say, okay, what do we want to prioritize and what can, what can you guys get behind or what do you want to get behind? Um, so, yeah, so, so those were then again, community center and beach environment were the other ones. So we're moving a little bit on those things, but, um, looking for your input of kind of where you guys with the specific things in each one or areas, um, that we want to kind of try to tackle. So well, I think some of the low hanging fruit, the easier ones would be beach information that we could advise on to give our input. Yep. The community center, yeah, we're waiting uh, like everybody else. I mean, for pertinent information. Yeah. Um, and then, as you mentioned, I, I thought maintenance would be a good one as well, but yep. that's going to be deferred to yep. at least January. Yeah, I mean, I guess unless there's things with any of these, when I say... I'll be ready to give you that. I'll be putting the budgets together and, you know, and asking for my staff to say, hey, go get quotes on this and kind of work through that. But if there's always something that comes to you through a citizen or a group that you you serve with or people you work with, please, you know, I'd rather hear that now than, in, you know, three mm -hmm. months later when the season's gone by or somebody's lost their mind because uh, we didn't address it. So, yeah, any of these items, if you can be the vehicle to get the message back to us and we can try to address it or educate it why we can't. Or we can, but it's going to be in, you know, due process. Um, so, um, yeah, again, we're open to anything. Um, well, those were my two cents on <laughs> trying to tackle a few of the items, uh, unless anybody had something else. Yeah, you said beach signs or beach, what was the term you said? Uh, the beach situation. Okay. Uh, okay. The, Trash cans, the dogs, the fees. Okay. Yeah, I think that's a good one. Yeah, so we have, I mean, I guess there are your articles. I don't know if you guys want to hop down to the beach thing and have that discussion. And then we can talk about the community center, kind of where that is. And those were two of your bigger items, you know, on the, right. well, on the fees. The, the 25 to 40 group of guys, yeah. what, what is being offered here? Not much. And, and where we need what we've been talking about as a staff is uh, getting to those groups and holding kind of polling sessions. People that are active find things to do. Oh, so a lot of them, yeah. like we've looked at, we've researched leagues and different type of stuff, and they're all South Portland, Portland, where they have a bigger population, and they never stop because it's like we can, we have enough can do it. People have found things to do. It's really about. Um, if we bring it back here, can we sustain it? And can we do it better mm -hmm. to serve our own residents? Um, Some one, of that will be answered probably if and when we get a community center too, because yeah, the reason right. South Portland or Portland does is they have facilities to do inside activities. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, because yeah. people all thought, hey, well, let's start a COVID basketball league yeah. for, for people, you know, 20 to out of high school to whatever age. And it's like, we only have a gym for like three weeks between basketball and softball. You know what I mean? So yeah. it's like, you don't, can't run anything. And, and, you know, we're not going at 10 o'clock at night. Yeah, we have larger, we have, we have a lot of private groups that run a lot of that age range in Portland. It's not, it's not really Portland rec based. Right. Portland mm -hmm. rec is like 
what is and what it is here in Scarborough. It's yeah. more of the younger ages and then your senior adults and they read the facilities like Ca Casco Bay Sports is the one that runs, say. you know, the major yeah. the major uh, operation for that age, for that mm -hmm. age range. And, and they just use Paco our facility. As well. Yeah. 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 And you've got all those running clubs that run in Portland. Yeah. 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 Like, uh, yeah. And so we're trying to target how do we been talking with Steve and Rebecca just briefly, how do we create social experiences to get people together? versus some of our typical rec sports things, whether we offer group hikes and maybe it finishes at none such. Just how do you create those things where we we don't want to get out of our lane, but is there a way to put some health wellness into an activity, cornhole, or just things that people, yeah. you know, those type of things that are popular. And But again, we don't want to create things just to create it. Right. Uh, this is just to throw it out there and see if it sticks, but um, there's this book called Fair Play that's talking about um, basically family life and men and women's roles yeah. and someone told me that the freeport community services is offering a clinic on um, fair play and how to make uh you know your family run smoother and i that's a good way to get parents of young kids yeah. in yeah yeah i think anything like that where it's in that kind of enrichment mm -hmm. that that hits family wide we can definitely look into those type of things yeah. you know um fair play it's called yes yeah, I think anything like that and resources that we can bring out of town. I did the uh, polling table um, and our staff, everybody had two hours and I had the last two hours and I had somebody asking, why don't we do X, Y, and Z? And I said, because it's being offered by other people. Right. I said, but if it's something that's not, I said, so send me an email. We can look into it. If we can find an instructor, get a consistent space and do it well, we're happy to try, yeah. you know? Um, but if there's, there's, you know, it's... Uh, there's competition and someone else is doing it, you know, and we don't need to, especially, we don't want to cut a private business house because we, we can do it cheaper. That's not a, a model we want to take either, unless it's a kind of a startup thing, like it's a taster and then you go back to, you know, a fitness class we do here for cheaper, then you're going to go to Foley's and get full service. You know, like how do you build that up? Um, but maybe your newsletter is very good, the town newsletter. Yeah. So maybe to Ellen's point, like, I mean, my kids did the Freeport basketball thing yeah. years ago. Yeah. Freeport ran it. Yeah. Um, just communicating what's there as opposed to actually doing it yourself. Right. Yeah, we just, we're looking at a brochure too, because we have a lot of groups asking to put stuff in it. And we've, before COVID, we had to say, we had to pull out those pages because so many people, we were like being the gatekeeper of who we advertise for. Um and so we've been talking about how do we get like-minded organizations that we vet and say, okay, we've got so many spaces a month that you could say, okay, you know, send me your dance class, send me your karate, send me your, you know, chess club, it, whatever it is, you yeah. know, whatever you're doing outside, we're willing to, you know, willing to kind of fill those gaps. Uh, well, but then I'm guessing that other community services groups would want it. If, if you're offering something that South Portland isn't, why right. not? Yeah. Sort of. Yeah. share the wealth so yeah to speak. the challenge is and this is where we were in our population it's either big enough to sustain it on its own yeah and you have to say okay like we do this you know we have a, we're discussing with the seniors right now right now we have a two-week policy that residents can sign up first and then in two weeks non-residents can sign up because we only have 14 seats on a, on a bus and so those fill up you know and so we're trying to where's that equity to a resident and prioritize those things so um that's always the challenge of getting our population too big and then how do you you know how do you set those parameters so um but yeah I, I, stuff like that fair play those are the type of things we've been reaching out for babysitting courses and like boat licenses and just those kind of enrichment things that we can just host here what about the cpr do anything become of that i never heard uh i'm desperate for that yeah let me check back with fire because yeah, that's another thing where parents would come in at that 25 i did it like range. eons ago when yeah. my kids yeah. were little and now i'd like to do it again. if sydney was doing that before she left let me see where i remember a babysitting one too that yeah something yeah. yeah exactly yeah. Yeah. we we did a cpr thing at higgins beach the association one night and had anybody that wanted to come and we had the fire department come over and, yeah. and they're all so expert sure. Uh, at, at that stuff, I right? called them twice and didn't get a call back. Oh, I don't, well, it was easy. It was very. When I, was it, I knew Mike very well, and we were able to do that. And recently, the, huh? recently, no, this was four, five, six years ago. Yeah, okay. uh, is it was just uh, one of the gals had to be administered uh, CPR, and so we just decided how many guys know about it, and everybody said yeah. no. Well, let's. Get somebody come in, and, 
uh, it was well attended and uh, people enjoyed it. I think it was two years ago, I was accidentally ended up on the Little League Safety Committee. <laughs> and uh, you missed the meeting. Huh? <laughs> yeah, I, I was like, oh, I'll help with something. And that's where I landed. But anyway, um, I reached out to the fire department then because they ended up doing like part of the volunteer training, training. that um, I had a contact there. So they were very responsive <laughs> um, in that instance. But definitely they're the ones. Yeah, so they was a conversation with the lieutenant. I just don't know where, yeah. where it went when she left. So we can, we can. You can make uh, money on yeah, and again, it's one of those things where it's it's uh, sometimes that's community good too. You know, yep. more people that know what's going on, and if we can do it, and it there's not a lot of indirect costs for us, and they're all in there to yeah. their time, then um, we might be able to just yeah. say, okay, cover cards, and you know, yeah, call up the local uh, news and say, yeah. come on over, we're having a group take pictures, and have a little write up. It's right. it's just good yeah. public. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, I mean, again, so we can kind of dive down into that program piece. And I guess my only comment to you guys is if there's things you think of or see or, you know, be a vessel, you know, pass it, pass it our way. Mm -hmm. um, so going back to the, it sounds like you're making progress on all of those points. Is there one where you could use our help? I mean, we're supportive of all of them and yeah. you are making progress. So yeah. is there one that needs more support than another i for me the place where we struggle is we, one we don't toot our own horn enough <laughs> yes you know which gets you marketing and gets you that publicity and we're we need to figure a way to get out of the community and that's why i asked steve based on to kind of call the parent teacher groups because most of my staff does not live here they're not banging into somebody at hannaford's or coaching little league or you know or going to church together somebody or at the association meeting that's that's the kind of stuff about being a messenger and being available for that sort of stuff is huge because you guys probably know 20 times the people that I know, you know, or any of my staff, except for the people that grew up here and they're just now moved away, you know, but um, we have a certain demographics we have a deep connection with, but then it's, it's how do we get that message out and then how do we receive it and get it back here so people feel like they're being heard. That's, that's a challenge, yeah. you know, that's part of that. Uh, other kind of idea we had in terms of the volunteer and right. community partnering of right. having liaisons from, yep. Right, yep. from this group to different areas of town. So I feel like hearing yep. that, you know, maybe that should also be a priority. I yeah, that's a good say. idea because I would love to have on a, be able to say, hey, I will take that message. But if you really want to sit down with somebody, call Trish. She's in charge of the Blue Point area. Right. And she'd love to sit down and, you know, and again, because it's easier to say not to a staff person. Mm -hmm. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? So. I mean, if that's something we want to take some time with at some point to say, okay, here's the map, like create little wards, <laughs> you know what I mean? So when he goes to visit the schools, the parents' associations, how, they, is, does each school have a parent's association? Each parent, each elementary has their own. And so he's reached out to all three and he's going to, he's made email and they're like, yeah, let's get together so we can go meet with them, find out, I don't even know what their frequency of meeting is or how often or when do they change their, their leadership board so you can kind of plan something and then again to be able to say hey you want to hold that we have a space or we're going to hold you know an event would you like to volunteer or how, just whatever it is to so once he gets those meetings for now the schools are in neighborhoods once he gets those meetings can you assign one of us to go with him even if we're just quiet and listening but yep. we're at least a yep. face that yep. says oh I yeah i'm so i can so put so it so. out there to, to everybody when we start finding those out I think anything like when we had the the, um, the last Pine Point meeting, yeah. you came, Rick came. It was nice to have another set of ears hearing yeah. what's being heard because certain things I'm hearing, certain people I turn off because <laughs> you just can't hear it anymore, and everybody hears something different. Mm -hmm. So, and then when we go to reciprocate that back to a message or a charge or go to council, we can say, "Hey, we've had this meeting, this meeting, we attended this. It's right. just not us." sitting on our own silo and that's right. where i think people want to be be heard so yeah would, would it i don't know if this would be appropriate or not but i was thinking like ellen and i go to saint max for example yep. it's a huge parish and yep. it's here in scar well it's part of a parish that encompasses cape and south yep. as well it's you know yep. a well-attended church i wonder they do a lot of for example senior events yep. so if there's ideas to reach out to parents with young kids i wonder if there's something that would be appropriate for the town to like co-sponsor kind of with the parish at St. Max 
and be able to facilitate conversations with people that don't have kids in schools but are still part of the community. Yeah, and we're going to get to it, but mm -hmm. there's a sheet here to talk about an event we're doing yeah, on the 7th. Yeah, yeah, that would be good. And so um, I'll just kind of, because this may be something where if you guys want to be, anybody's available. So I didn't put it on here because we just added it, but on that same day from 2 to 3.30, we're going to hold another slot. So UTL, our company, that consultant, uh, and then any committee members on both boards ad hoc or this are more than happy to join us. But we're going to go spend um, 45 minutes at the middle school, and then we're going to spend 45 minutes at the high school finding out. The goal of this is to, for all the surveys we've done over the past three years, we know roughly what type of space people want. What it looks like and how big and how it functions, that's to be determined. But we know people want pools and gyms and walking tracks and, and meeting spaces. So the purpose of this event is for us to go and ask them in the school and say, okay, hey, middle schoolers, if we built the gymnasium, what would you want to see happen in there? If we were building a pool, what would you want to see? What's important to you? So then we're going to go after that, go to the high school for 45 minutes. Then they'll have a break. And then on that day from 2 to 3.30, we're holding a senior um, gingerbread house making class or event here. Oh, yeah. um, and so that'll bring in some 55 plus, but then we'll make it open for anybody else to come. But we should should get a good 20 or 30 people here for that. And then that night, 5 to 7, is just open. It's just an open event for all ages to come in. Um, and they'll have boards where you can kind of put your activities for a pool. And then they'll be there to ask questions. It's really about them then having this information to take it back and start thinking about, okay, what a center could look like and then vet that and then vet cost and vet operation and all sorts of stuff. So they really want to know what people want. It's, it's probably the most important part for people to get their voices heard because there's nothing worse than building something and it doesn't do what you want it to do. So, um, so I think that those are messages that you guys could share with your, your groups you're, you know, the people that you, you, you know, I'll get this sheet updated with the, the two to three on there. Um, and I can email it to everybody so they have that information. Yeah. But we post it in places, talk to people, share with our groups. It, you know, we need to get a good, um, a good turnout on that day. Um, and again, Alex knows they're, they're good listeners. They're very thoughtful in their words. And they, um, so they want people to come and talk to them. And it's, and it's not going to be like, oh, we can't do that. It's just, it's just, it's just it at this time. It's not going to be a, an hour or so. Um, and then I can email that to everybody. I, it just hit the newsletter, the town newsletter this week. So, yeah. yeah. Um, and then we'll create an email, I'm trying to stagger it so people are getting overwhelmed with everything coming up with holidays. So um, we'll send an e-blast out to our total database that we have to let people know. So um but that's a great place but yeah i think going down the talking about getting liaison again and that sort of stuff makes makes total sense and as we start talking about some of these projects it'd be nice to establish that so when we go to say okay hey we're going to meet and the goal in 2025 is to renovate old blue point park let's have a neighborhood meeting we already can build that constituency sit down so we need to what do we want to see here we want to you know Renovate the same, add things, change. It'd be nice to get that feedback way ahead of the process to start mm -hmm. adding that community input to our plan. So, um, yeah. So I think that's a big one. That outreach is huge. Um, this beach one, I think, is a big one. Mm -hmm. So. All right. Um, do you want to talk? Let's talk about the beaches then. So, the game plan for trash and yeah um so last meeting we gave everybody the figures of what we what we raised and that sort of stuff um we covered our costs you know and um we're still doing trash so at the end of the year we'll be able to kind of see where we end up um what i'm hoping to gather from this i mean we talked about some of the challenges or some of the challenges but even call them dislikes that people don't like about certain things and it's more about how the beach functions then you know yes we get we want trash empty more or more barrels or less barrels or those are choices and most of it comes down to fiscal and can we pull it off um 
to me, it's really important to figure out, okay, what are the priorities when we're talking about um, how we want the beach to function? We just had our annual end of the year with the Higgins Beach Association uh, Civic Committee and their new president and um, and a couple of the board. And so um, how many years did Blenheim serve as that president? Well, I had a 10 years and she had it four. Right okay, together. So, so, yeah, so across the coffee pot, 14 years in the house. Wow. Yeah, one time. Yeah. So <laughs> anyways, um, we had that conversation. Really what came out of it was neither group can do it on their own. So how, what are we going to do to help each other and then prioritize what we do and then educate each other's groups, whether it's visitors going there or their own constituents that live there in the association? Um, and really, we boiled it down to two things. Safety of everybody there, walking, driving, access, that sort of stuff. And then um, I would call it more like beautification about how it feels and looks. So we're going to review the signs and the messaging and that sort of stuff. We haven't done that in probably 10 or 12 years and um, what that all looks like and means. And I think that work can translate across all the beaches. Yeah. Um, but a lot of the same conversations that we've talked about, uh, trash, when are dogs allowed? When dogs aren't allowed? Um, how do we deal with it when we have an issue? You know, a lot of it came down to enforcement was the conversation around what we want the enforcement to be. Um, and PD was there, Public Works was there, the town manager was there. So, I mean, it was a good, um, it was a good multi-way dialogue. Uh, Pine Point just formed their own association that just got off the ground. So we just got that um, notification. So there's a vehicle for us to go to now to say, hey, you know, can we vet this issue with you? Mm -hmm. um, you know, I've got the latest Herd Park Draw argument I'll give you guys tonight. My plan is to go to them in December and uh, January with it to have that conversation. Um, how did that? So how did that get started? And who's so I hosted this fall, um, and that was the one Rick and and, and um, Roger went to a Herd Park project meeting. And there's about 64 or five people there. Um, and I set the ground rules and it turned into two and a half hours of everything that was ever wrong and happened <laughs> in the thing. It was a and, bit session. It, 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 yeah, for lack of a better word, but I get it. Yeah. Because they felt like they weren't heard or action. But again, things are more complicated than on the surface. Why the sand's going this way? Or why did we take away this parking spot? Or why was it, you know, her tree cut, not mine? Or you know, decisions. So at the end of the whole thing, I finally said, okay, I will reach out to all the appropriate people, which I did, public works, police, town manager, told them all the stuff. Um, two things happened in that meeting. Finally, I said, okay, I'm going to ask a very basic question. Out of all of you here, who parks in the Herd Park parking lot to go to the beach? And there was one couple, two people that raised their hand. Yeah. Everybody else goes to the beach through their own vessels, whether yeah. they go to a neighbor's house, walk on the pathways. So I said, with all due respect, I don't need you to do this project. I'm asking for your input because you're concerned about everything else, which I understand completely why. And so they finally started. Someone said, well, we're never going to be heard if we don't have, oh, it was somebody that just moved from Prout's Neck to the Pine Point area. And they said, we need to, we need to get unified like Higgins, like Prout's. And they've been so kind of scattered in their own, like Prout's Neck, not sorry, not Prout's Neck, um, Hillsbury Shores has something. The other end of town has something. So they were never. So they all get together, bylaws. They've got a, a board and they've got uh, trustees. So I think they've had two meetings. Mm -hmm. So um, and so it's going to be a great sounding board for us. And and my plan is always to, when we do things, to vet it through them. And if I can get input with the, with the opportunity, there's certain things that we have to do down there. And then there's going to be choices we can make. So, um, so that's a new vehicle for us. So that's good. Um, and, uh, but so, yeah, so those, so again, the issues for them were, uh, traffic speeding, you know, after hours activities, um, can't get to their neighborhood. Um, all the things that are challenging the beach, any beach community across country. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. And so it was, again, how do we pick and choose and prioritize? And then where can we try to make some difference? You know, they have, um, you know, 
people were parking in people's yards and you know profit parking and so they had a lot of issues going on so it's going to be nice to have that group put together um and then be able to start talking about oh, there's this river structure you know as far as widening the roads and people where people walk and it's kind of the same things you have at higgins very not so much because it's not that traveled of a road um but again not everybody's going to be happy you want a sidewalk you got to take somebody's front lawn right i mean it's, it is what it is right mm -hmm. you know but you that's so again hopefully it's a vehicle for education so when they need something to happen they know what they're talking about so um, or at least educated enough to make a decision and not just say I want it and then realize, oh, it's in my front yard or they're putting the light pole in the corner of my yard because we're complaining that the parking lot's dark. It's like, you know. Yeah. So um, I think it's a good thing. Um, I know that, again, I shared those with the recommendations that our staff brought to you guys last time about some of the, the charges and the pay. I think we're going to see coming this winter um, waterfront harbors and waterfront talking about charging at the co-op and some of these off street parking to kind of manage. Um, I'm going to do a little more digging into that. And now there was, you know, um, cause we need to be connected. We can't have multiple pay systems in town right. um, or apps or whatever they want to use. So that's could be a problem. Um, and then again, ultimately can PD enforce it. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of the stuff we talked about was education and outreach. And so whether that's with our residents or our guests, um, we did get the part-time parks ranger in last year's budget. So we'll be working on that on the winter to kind of get that part-time model out. I did um, I have reached out to the land trust to kind of see if there's any partnership potentials with, because um, ultimately it needs, we need to have a person that's, that's in charge of their own selves, if that makes any sense and, and doing our work. Um, and then ultimately, hopefully growing it where it's the program builds, it could be useful. And then we can have enough people around our challenge spaces to mitigate some of these dog issues and have more feet on the ground and holding more educational sessions of why that, you know, picking up dog poop and where it should go and getting direct feedback on that day. Um, and not necessarily with somebody with a, with a vest and a gun, you know, just different, different approach. I mean, you guys have them. I mean, it's, it's just a different vibe. So um so that should help a little bit but again 30 hours a week it's not seven days a week that's not all summer they're thinking i need to come off it's it's not going to be the end and be all it's like a baby step to get us where we need to go so mm -hmm. um so that's a potential but really i guess i'm looking for feedback or strategies that you guys you know things that you want us to try to really focus on or come back with or Get to get, get us together with other groups to say, okay, how do we, you know, we're hearing that we have an off leash issue, and it's and it's more about people not understanding what being under voice control means. Like, we don't, it doesn't have to be abrasive. It doesn't have to be, you know, being a conflict. How do we just relay the information and try to partner with groups to say, okay, how do we, how do we move the needle? You know what I mean? If we can only have five calls a week versus ten, that's a great step. You know, mm -hmm. it doesn't have to be. We're doing nothing. And so um, I think we're at that point where we have to try some stuff. Um, and outreach is free. So I don't know. How much signage is there? Too much. <laughs> and it's confusing. Well, that's what we talked about. Like yeah. we've made, Jill made some signs with the dog signs. And like now we have got a, a green sign that goes up during the season that comes down. And we put blue ones up with the different rules. So you could just, you know what you can do. You don't have to read what I can't do. Mm -hmm. And you don't have to read through 300. So we talked about the parking lot. I'll use Higgins Beach. We talked about our parking lot. Like if we're going to have sign pollution, let's put it in our parking lot. And then once they leave it, they're, we can really downsize the signs, need no, more discreet, uh, chat with PD a little bit about, hey, and, you know, hey, here's, here's the main focus of the rule. We want to know all the rules to the beach. Click the QR code because... You know, and then it's it still gives me the authority or ranger to say, Alex, you can't fly your kite in the, in the in the area. Well, it doesn't say that. No, click here. It does. It doesn't have to again be controversial, but we can prioritize the four or five rules that would make the biggest impact versus worried about number twenty that one person is right. doing all summer, right. like carry and carry out and in dogs and you know, and then being able to kind of market that. Um, 
Yeah, and still do the kind of the temporary signs we've done. PD's put up a little no park in or carry in or carry out. We've also talked about um, making some more parking lot full signs. And PD's agreed to, you know, when the parking lot attendant can call the, the officer on duty and he or she can run it down to the end of the road so they don't get all the way into Higgins Beach or <laughs> don't get into Ferry. Can you put that online? Mm -hmm. If they're calling someone, can you put it on your Facebook well, it, and if, say? Yeah, most people, when they come there, they're there. You know what I mean? I, yeah. I talk to people all the time. Actually, in the Scarborough Moms Facebook group, yeah. people will post, has anyone at Ferry? What's the situation? Is yeah. the lot full at Higgins? Yeah. So yeah. it's not, again, people are could, wondering. Yeah, we might be able to put it like a beach Facebook page and a tennis yes. have, you know, hey, amazing. not full, not full, but it'll see the one left. Yes, that's you amazing. Know, yeah, but yeah, until they show up, it says lot not full, right? And they show up and it's full because they came twenty minutes later. Yeah, you know what I mean. The right. kid, the eighteen year old. Oh, we're presuming. Well, presumably yeah. everybody's nice and thoughtful and courteous. Yeah, and they just didn't if, drive. If you're going to provide something <laughs> like that, you have to be right on top of it. You got you yeah. can't yeah. you can't it's be at home. Wives suggest the beach. Right. As yeah. of you know, ten thirty seven a.m. Yes, yeah. 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 I'll call every yeah. morning at five thirty. It's full. Let's right. go. Yeah. In the summertime, it's full. Yeah, yeah. It's it's sure. a, and again, it takes a bit to get to all three beaches. You know, just but if the attendants are there, yeah, they can call. Well, they could call, but again, there's like Ferry, there's, I mean, excuse me, Higgins is one person. You know, they only run one person in that lot some days, depending on the weather, we'll run two. So, I mean, they're, they're taking money, they're, they're dealing with the public, they're doing that sort yeah. of stuff. Um, Sounds really challenging to have some sort of, some sort of alert. Yeah. Yeah. The only way that, that. Out, the only way I've seen it is like if you have an online app and you're, you're buying your spot. Then you can see when that spot, like, hey, no spots left. Because mm -hmm. you, you've literally clicked on, I'm in a spot. Mm -hmm. Computer knows you got 40 spots and there's 40 cars. And, you know, and then the next person comes in and grabs a spot. But it's, does it know when you vacate those spots? Uh, it's the only when they're timed. Again, it's supposed to be, you know, I'm only there for two hours. So it's like, yeah. okay, I click it at six. You should be out at eight, a potential spot. But again, uh, we 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 hire a lot of high school kids, yeah. and so it's just I'm not I don't want to put them in a place to be wrong wronger. It's not even a word, but wronger than they already are in some people's eyes. Yeah. You know, you didn't get up quick enough, or you know, I've been standing here, and just so it's a it's a tough it's a tough gig, especially by the end of the summer. So I think that willing to vet any idea that we come up with or how to move that again, how do we move that needle? Some things are just going to be the way they are. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's just the way it are. Again, we did see an increase in season passes because of the price. And I think we'll see that even more next year. Um, you know, for me, it's, I would love to go cash free. I still don't trust the machines and the service yet, the internet providers. Um, but I would love not to have fives and tens running around. Yeah. You know, it's always been kind of a sketchy thing. Um, I think we talked about last time we met that different places that use that like park, yep, park or yeah. whatever, yeah. Um, that there being limited signal, I know, especially down by Higgins yeah. would definitely be a yeah. hurdle. Yeah. Yeah. So that those are the kind of functional challenges that those type of things have. Um you know, would you just give them a square so you could use a credit card? Well, they can use the machines all can use a credit card right now. So then why are you collecting cash? Because if the machine goes down, sometimes the machine the machine works through a signal, through a, a um, excuse me, mm -hmm. a cell signal. Yeah, because a lot of people uh, come to the beach and they have their yeah. 10, yeah. 15, or 20 bucks. And right, but if we got rid of the cash and only had the machine, we go down there probably at least four or five times a week and reset the Higgins Beach machine just because it lost the signal and you got yeah. a queue oh, backed yeah. up and so yeah. um it's an option but there's our, our cell coverage in higgins is poor yeah it's, and it's gotten worse the past 18 months or so when i go to my parents house it goes to sos sometimes it's not yeah. even a signal yeah. wow so in, yeah, in, really in, and nothing fails when the opportune time right when you got full right. staff and it's raining it's <laughs> It's when you're short staffed and it's and Verizon up. won't go there to put up a tower either. <laughs> so um we've tried that. Yeah, but on your list was trash kids, dogs and traffic. animals, pass fees, employment, uh sorry, enforcement with online, uh porta parties, and then people who you know, again, people uh 
hourly versus you know parking all day, um, and that that applies to the fee structure. So I don't know if quarter parties should be out. They are not uh, not in the beach area. Uh, yeah. What do you mean? I say what you... we've talked about that at uh, you know about. 10 years ago and they wanted, somebody says, well, we can come in with an idea. We can put it in that guy's lot that's empty in front of uh, the guy that, um, uh, that, that with Fitbit, Fitbit. Oh, but, John uh, and yeah. And they put it there and uh, everybody- oh, party at Higgins? Yeah. Well, the bathroom's open year round. Well, I know, but I'm just saying porta party at Higgins is, don't even, don't even, you're gonna oh, have yeah you're gonna have everybody on your back to get yeah. that thing out. you know the challenge in the porta parties is that most of the company well, the companies that we use we are very fortunate they can come clean them twice a week I mean that's an ongoing yeah. it's an ongoing challenge and so we've got them committed to two weeks um if we have a mild winter we may have six porta parties at at herd um we keep two at ferry none at Higgins uh clean twice a week um we get good coverage with well no we if it's not clean or it's messy we get a phone call i was going to say ferry's got their own yeah. officer down there with pros next so they usually every morning drive through the lot and give us a kind of update of something they rise or broken or trash or you know something's been dumped there you know um herd is the one that uh yeah porta potties just have limited capacity yeah sure do so um that's why you know if we ever got to a point of building a new bathhouse, the idea would be able to have two of those that were year round, just like Higgins, you know. Yeah. And if you open year round, people have them, you add them to our clean and run, and their the capacity is endless. So, mm -hmm. um, and we don't get a lot of complaints from the ferry unless somebody goes down there and does some silly dump a dump a porta potty or stuff a whole you know trash bag in there. Is there, yeah. is there anything from us that you need or could use from this discussion on the beach issues? I, I, I honestly, I don't know. I think we've spun our wheels at a lot of this a lot of times, and it's just for me. I think the education is a big deal. I think that's going to be our kind of. Steve did a really good job with the summer with the attendance, and they all had their scripts and the books and who to call, and the answers were all the same and. Um, you know, I think if we can deal with some of the kind of parking issues or, um, is there an, so with the dogs, is there an action plan about voice control versus off leash? Like we talked about the difference there and, you know, the signage and yeah, I mean, because that seems like a big difference when we talk about, yeah, I think we have, I think it has to be an effort of education. But, but then also, while it's happening, you know what I mean? And that's boots on the ground to say, you know, hey, one, can your dog come out of that area? But, you know, when somebody can't call their dog back, it's already too late. You know what I mean? But don't you have to update the signs? Say it again? Do you have to update the signs? To All say the signs not... need to be up, updated, right. yeah. So that's but, the first. Oh, sorry. No, instead of saying off leash, under voice control. Yeah, it's a different it's yes. a different message, right? Yeah. Off, and, off leash and under voice control. Yeah. I mean yeah. it's an off leash area, but they need to be under voice under voice control. control. Yeah. Yeah. Because that's a problem. people don't always know what voice control well, means. So. And people think their dogs are friendly so they yeah. can run up to I us. almost think that the three beaches ought to be talked about separately instead of uh, all together. And we've been trying to and, and to this point we have done whatever the town recommends or the, or, or the ordinance that are there are for all three beaches. But the prob one of the biggest problems at Higgins, because I know it very well, uh, and you do too, are the birds that, were, that are there. I mean, there are special things. Once you get to learn those little birds, you, you, you fall in love with them. And they're not just the pipers, uh, the plovers, but you have the least terns. And last year, this past year, somebody went through the middle of, and, and they did around the gate and got through into the gate like and went over person. there and ransacked the whole place. It was, was 
an animal, whether it was a fox or a dog. I think that the, the Audubon didn't really say what it was to me anyway. But those those birds were gone. The next day, there were none there. So that's what the group and Higgins is trying to help with, uh, what's her name, with you. And she's doing a hell of a nice Jamie. job. Jamie. Yeah, the volunteer. And something's going to have to be done with the dogs and the varmints that go into that, like the fox or something, and try to... have somebody out there yeah, slashing fox in the middle of the night. I mean, yeah. No, what, what that's right. I, but it is a problem. Oh, yeah. I oh, My yeah. concern with that is that if they can't go to Higgins, then they're going to go to Pine Point. Well, we have whatever the same issue. The with the dogs or the ducks? Just like if the, whatever the rule is, if they don't yeah, like the rule, I, if I, one I, place, I would not be in favor of separate rules because yeah. it's just hard to enforce. Right. But we're having the same issues because at Ferry, you've got Western, which is a huge habitat. Yeah. And they come around the corner and we're always having to somebody, hey, you're over the line, come back. And then Pine Point is... is um, had a, had a few pairs, not as much as yeah. the other two, but um, was better this year as far as as far as fledglings and, and pairs. And, and that's becoming a bigger, I mean, you go down there any day before nine o'clock and that front part of the parking lot is, is fuller than yeah. the Higgins Beach lot with people because they can walk farther. Yeah. 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 They yeah. can walk farther, they go all the way over and back and it's just. There, years ago, um, in terms of the voice control, years ago, there at Robinson Woods in Cape Elizabeth, there was a huge brouhaha on dogs and under voice control and all that stuff. It was very controversial. They landed on something and I don't recall what it was, yeah. but that might be a look place to look at what the rules were for dogs in Robinson Woods. There were hours, it was voice control. And I think most people that walked there over time, it was sort of peer pressure. <laughs> Yeah. But they finally put a stake in the ground and said, this is what it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But you might want to look at whatever, just for guidelines. I just remember this is probably like 10 or 15 years yeah. ago. And with more detailed about like what voice control. Yeah, is because there's saying? a lot of habitat in there yeah. that's similar to the beach. Yeah. There's a lot of dangerous habitat and you're walking along the trails and this dog comes at you from around the corner. You can't even see it like on a beach. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I just remember there, it was awful. It was awful. Well, somebody asked me to, just... to in an earlier meter, uh, meeting, why don't we build a dog park? And I said, because that's a whole separate other challenges. And somebody mentioned that one of our first group of years that I was here, and people feel like if you do that now, you're going to be restricted to that. It doesn't help everything else, you know, and it brings other issues of who's, you know, the maintenance and the whole nine yards. Um, you know, the challenge I think that our beaches are facing more than most is our surrounding communities have restricted their rules. Right. Yes. So yep. you're getting yep. that. So right. we get all the leftovers. Yeah. And I that's not fair to the residents. No, it isn't. Yeah. So it's not fair. So I don't know. Or, I mean, yeah. I don't know if you guys want to look around to see if we can do the same thing too, but what other communities are doing. You know, someone mentioned to me once about like, hey, when I register my dog, I get a beach bandana. Like, in, or, you know, and you can't, we don't allow non-resident dogs. I don't know how you would enforce it, but like, what do you do? Wait, on our beaches, we don't allow non-resident dogs? No. You were saying as an example. I'm saying as an example. That's the way right. What the challenge is, everybody else is coming with their dogs because they, at their community, they said no. Right. And if we still want to offer something to a resident. So that's what, yeah. Age, we, we, yeah. You know what I mean? I don't know how you would ever enforce something like that is what I explained to the person, but like, how do we do something where our residents feel still like they're, they're being, you know, supported and have the the ability to go do so you start inching towards what other communities are doing right well that's the and that's restriction you know okay. other but people are doing it i'm not saying it, that yeah. it's yeah i mean yeah. how much of a maintenance issue is because i do i don't even have a dog yeah. but i have two kids <laughs> that do and they love their dog parks yeah is it a real pain in the neck in portland to because you have that dog park over by main med yeah, we have two dog parks. Used yeah. to be one off Corey, the ocean. Corey yeah. on the ocean. Yeah, yeah. Are they real nightmares? Um, they. I mean, they get they get de deteriorated pretty quickly. Yeah. I mean, you're you're. There's no understory growth. They, you know, you have to resurface them fairly regularly. Their erosion is a problem at times. So um, it is another maintenance issue. I see it as an eye. They're, I mean, they're not and, great looking. No, yeah. No. Yeah. yeah. They're not. Yeah. No, they're not. Yeah, they're not wonderful looking at all. I mean, they. Um, and they're also. You know, the same rules apply within the dog park. You're supposed to have your dog under voice control. Yeah. 
never the case. I know. I can't do it. No. And so people go there and, you know, we get complaints all the time about the unruly dogs that are, you know, causing problems with other dogs yeah. and families. And yeah. So, you know, we have to have our animal control officer and park rangers attend yeah. to those issues and try to make people feel more comfortable. And you could have contaminated waters just due to the amount of feces yeah. and yeah. Um, other waste that's kind of collecting in some of the puddles or, you know, storm water that's not draining appropriately. There's a slew of different things. You got to keep up with all the fencing to keep, you know, to keep them all in there. And, um, yeah, I mean, making sure there's no hazard tree issues that could be a problem to folks. Um, so we'll pass space, on the dog but... park. You're right. The only benefit, the only benefit <laughs> though, is things like, oh, the dog's not on voice control. You're still in an environment with all dog owners, right? right. Their dogs versus. That doesn't mean they'll leave the beach, right. though. No, I'm just saying, like, hypothetically, right. for right. people maybe from other right. towns or whatever, at least it's not random families that right. kids are afraid of dogs or they're allergic, Agreed. whatever it is, yeah. having the interaction, that's yeah. the only plus after yeah. hearing all of that. Yeah. That's right. the only plus that's left. And they're not, not usually huge spaces either, mm -hmm. right? And, you know, when people are looking for a spot to exercise their dog, a you know, dog park, you, you you want it to be a substantial size so that they can actually run around in it. And that's, right. in Portland, it's just an urban environment. It's hard for us to create a space right. for that space. I've only seen a yeah. couple really good ones. Bath has right next to the um, the museum on the river, right next to BRW. Is a, oh, wow. it's, it's a huge one. I mean, it's a walking track around the inside of the fence, and it's just, it's big enough where you can see 10 or 12 dogs running around, and they're not even like... They're in those spaces. If it's not an acre, I don't know what it is big. Wow. I think having big. yeah, having open spaces, you know, within the woods and trail networks yeah. and areas where you can, you know, land preserve yeah. or land trust areas that you know you can have dogs. I think that those are really great opportunities for folks to utilize those yeah. spaces. They they just may not be as utilized as the beach. Yeah, it's I think it has its place. Feeling. I think it has so. its place, but again, I think that we would get big pushback yeah. back if we were trying to do this in lieu of the other stuff. Yeah, you know, sure. so. Um, well, I think our three beaches that we have are very populated on a nice weather, exactly. and uh, um, you get there in the morning, and, and I know that uh, the kids cannot go and, and play in the water right. at, at 7 yeah. or 8 o'clock yeah. in the morning. It, yeah. it, Even the during the winter, my kids are, go to the beach. are there. Now, if you could put a, you know, dogs have to be on leash uh, like they are in the evening, and that's why we fought for that, for at least put the dogs on leash in the evening so that the kids... And I'm an old guy. I'm an old, uh, you know. Uh, yeah, we know. And 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 I love my I love my kids and my grandkids. And we go out there, but I don't want them to be uh, oh. uh, chased my around by the dogs. My eight year old, my oldest, will not go to the beach when the dogs are off leash yeah. because the people they just let them run up to the kids and they yeah. say, "My dog is friendly. Don't worry about it." Yeah. Like it's. Have you ever explored segments of beaches? Higgins has a certain area because of the plovers we have, right. um, yeah. but no, not to that extent. No, we could look at the problem with Higgins is with the tide. There's no yeah. beach. There's no oh, beach. there's no beach. Right. That's right. You know what I mean? On the right. tide, and Pine Point's got a little more. They've got some pretty decent when it's high tide. Seeing so the ferry, I mean, you have once you have two sides of ferry, right? Like. Or western, and you can't. Yeah, the western side. There. Yeah. It's already okay. Yeah, as soon, okay. soon as you turn, that thing bangs left. Mm. There's already it. none allowed there. Nope, that there's yeah. a sign on the ground. So I really think Pine restrictions at some point. Pine Point doesn't have only, so it's like 200 feet away from an enclosure or something. Wow. Nine, so three, yeah. I think you got to look at restrictions. It's for safety for everyone. We all, you know, that's part of your mission is safety and well being. That, that at is least true. to match the surrounding towns so yeah. that. Right. We're not getting all their dogs. Right. Yeah. Because that's what's happening now. Or, yeah. And we talked about raising um yeah, the fees. The fees as uh, a rationing of beach. So access. I guess that I'm sorry. I think if we matched our surrounding towns too, it's unified. Right. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Not, Absolutely. Just, yeah. Yeah. Not just with us, but South Portland yeah. people. Live exactly. Yeah. That's why I think like the, the trail one, and Robinson Woods is exactly the only that. one that's Keeping or has the ordinance that you can bring a dog is Old Orchard and us. Every other beach, I think, uh, no dogs. You're going to get complaints, but exactly to what Art said. Yeah. Everyone else is doing it. It's for safety, yeah. obviously. Yeah, safety. They've been, you know, vetted and practiced in other communities. and Or it's dogs on leashes. Like, what's the, you know. <laughs> yeah, it's it's... 
if you if they know you're on the community service board, uh, you're going to have it there for for. Yeah. All right, I can look around <laughs> and see what kind of what you know what the what the area is. I. Yeah, that's that's a political battle that mm -hmm. you know. So if that is the case, then you arm us with data. We've had 10 kids that have had to go to the hospital or whatever. Don't yeah. make it up, but yeah. maybe we can stretch the truth a little bit. No, I'm yeah. kidding. Um, I'm kidding. Yeah. Um, but maybe you have data on <laughs> what the cost to the environment and to the other people is so that we can present both sides or a complete picture. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I do know that I, uh, the plumber groups have asked to extend the dog restriction time to April 1st because it starts is that only plover groups only on Higgins correct no all the beaches run the same dog rules oh, but it starts mid-month well we, we 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 put up the signs at uh April 1st <clears throat> like you said yeah. it can't be sustained because we're all getting old and and the lady that's been doing it is asking for help and that uh, we want to, the, Higgins wants to go to the people, the dog owners and the dog uh, association and say, hey, you guys, when you were over here and agreed to put that on champion, I mean, on uh, champion, that you would have to supply somebody. And we've had four or five people, dog people doing it. And last year we're down to one. And say if you cannot supply us with something, then something needs to be done yeah. with the dogs. Right. Because uh, let me do a little let me do a little digging into the dog. So um Trish Lanchon, you better have data and you you're right about that. We need to have some 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 serious information that supports the case for reopening dog rules because I, I know I was here the last time we, I think Art was here too, last time we changed the dog rules and it isn't just that you're going to get complaints. It's the whole discussion is far more than controversial. It's painful mm -hmm. and it offends, personally offends a lot of people. And I'm not saying don't do it, but I'm just saying be very professional about how we approach this Mm -hmm. And the way that I suggest and think that we should probably do it is to do put a sign up or notice or press release or an article saying that we have received some complaints and the advisory board is seeking feedback and then just do it that way and then reach out to the dog owner groups and let them know because the dog owner groups will help to enforce mm -hmm. among their own yeah. people. So we don't need to be um, as harsh about it as we think we need to be. That point may come, but it would probably be better for everybody if we started it in the educational format. Yeah. Help us help the problem. Yeah. yeah. Well, we yeah. have to make a decision. No, no, I, right. I, I, right. So, I, right. Like you say I'm with great. your kids, right? Don't make yeah. me make a decision. I don't want to have to do it. Right. Yeah. yeah. You're forcing me to punish. <laughs> so let's use like a survey <laughs> monkey or you are. Yes, I think it's a good idea. That's a good idea. Yeah. We have received complaints. We're looking into it. Yeah. Are you on numbers before yeah. we have to change yeah. this? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and how, how long ago was was it last revisited? It because well, if I can look at the say, burns and the scars, <laughs> and they heal well. They heal. The only reason I asked was, you know, to say we've received some complaints. Some people may think, and we're revisiting this because a couple people complained. Well, uh, so talking about saying we have received significant complaints or yeah. something like that, not yeah. to escalate it, but just to make it clear why it's like worth revisiting. Right. Well, yeah. I think this. I think the environments have changed too, as far as what the other communities are doing. For sure. You know, we've had every year we get asked from, you know, from Audubon and stuff with, you know, again, us and OB are like the only two that don't have more strict seasonal 
Um, How have the other communities been successful in these things? This it, our yeah. group goes to other groups. That's the thing about, and I think yeah. Rick nailed the thing oh, on that. Yeah. Our group, yeah. same thing. Our, our group is organized. When OB was talking about changing, yeah, they went to OB to help them. I mean, because they understand if it happens in one place, then it's just a, it's yeah. a matter of time. And, and so, is, yeah, I think we try to figure out how to educate and move the needle, yeah. even if it's just a smidge. And yeah. if that's just for their essentially, health. if we could get more better compliance, we don't have to do new rules, right? Right, right. right. I suspect we won't. The voice control thing is always an issue, yeah. And I myself just don't even believe there is such a thing, yeah. Like, I'm gonna tell your three year old child, you know, don't take that candy bar most of the time in the work, but sometimes it doesn't, right? Yeah, so you need to have. Yeah. You need to be able to intervene, but I, I think we should start in a professional and sensitive and attentive way to everybody's needs, and, and that starts with feedback. Yeah. And that, just having that out there, is going to ignite a storm. <laughs> our, our approach here is to listen. We need yeah. to listen. Yeah. So, and I, I agree. I don't have a dog. I don't like dogs to come up to me uninvited and, you know, it's, Especially with a small kid, some of the dogs tower over them. And some dog owners, I've had some dog owners tell me they won't take their dog to the beach because other dogs will harass yeah. them. Yeah, so oh, yeah. Yes. some of the dog owners are going to be on the yeah. side of change. That's right. right. There's there's a big percentage of the dog owners at Higgins that walk their dogs on the street but will not put them on the beach. Yeah. Yeah, because once you go click and put them off leash, it's different. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So I I can uh I can frame some stuff up, um, and again, I can try to get it out to you. Maybe we just it's topic for our January meeting because I don't think doing anything during the holidays makes a bit of sense. Yeah. To put any sort of no one's going to see it, or oh. it's you know people are already stressed out enough. And this is sort of a very left field yeah. idea, but oh, you yeah. asked for brains, yeah, yeah. right? This is not dogs. This yeah. is more the rules of the beach. Yeah. Yeah. You know how. Um, at the national parks, your kids can get these passports and get stamped yeah. with their national park rangers. Could you, we don't want to make kids be enforcement, but if you make them proud to be little beach rangers, like this is yeah. my beach, this is a really, I'm proud of being here. Yeah. I want to keep my beach clean and do it through community services. Like they get a sticker or they just learn yeah. the basic rules. Yeah, they see. Trash your kid. And I wouldn't, hopefully they could comment, but at least if they're talking to their parents, like we need to take our trash out or whatever some yeah. the basic rules that a five to 12 year old could That's learn right, yeah. and then they can become yeah. little and then hopefully the education goes up so it's a little left field but i just remember my kids loved getting those little park things and i would not yeah. put a 12 year old in charge of telling <laughs> another person on the beach what to do but if they kids but can they instruct their, their parents. parents yeah mm -hmm. yeah yeah, no, I think that, that and is maybe you partner with the Audubon because they have some education yeah. programs with the kids. Like maybe that's an opportunity to partner with other people in the community. And again, launching this ranger program, then maybe that person could oh, have a well, stamp yeah. on them or something to be able yeah. to say, yeah, that, that exactly. Know, okay, nice. or you notice, I mean, yeah, this is what park ranger does, yeah. So, and you know, like the kids, the even yeah. and even the kids, like if someone happens to be there on their shift and sees a kid pick up a piece of trash, right. Then they get a little thing, and at the end of the summer they get, I don't know, a dairy corner ice cream yeah. or something like yeah. that. Yeah. yeah. I think that's such a good idea too, because you think about, you know, when kids learn like, oh, you have to wear your seatbelt. If they see anyone that doesn't have it on, that you know, they're gonna say, say something. And if your kid's telling you you're doing something wrong, like you're probably gonna be like, okay, that's mortifying. Like they know the rules. <laughs> and I, right. And I don't, it won't work for everyone, but I think that's a really good way to for community building too. I want to say one more thing. Uh, then I'll shut up. Is it about the Beach? <laughs> yes, it is. It is <laughs> yes, it is. And it's about your trash cans. Okay, go and ahead. About trash. That's a double whammy. Yeah. yeah. They, they were, we were very successful over at Higgins with the trash cans because we took them off on every street except two. The main One with the, the main ramp and the... Uh, um, the meter path. Yes, the, where the meter pass is. The rest of the beach was as clean as I've ever seen it in all the years. And I've been there 25 years. It was clean. I, I Going out to visit the birds, I up until this year, I was bringing maybe a bag with me filled with, with bottles and cans and bringing it to the trash can. And 
a lot of times at the trash can, especially way down on uh, uh, shipwreck. Shipwreck, way down. You'd have a bag. I mean, a can full or a can full and everything around it. You don't see that anymore because there's no barrel there. Right. And I think you've done a good job, and we need to continue it. If and I would almost, if I if if I was you, I would go with no trash barrels and save the trash barrels at, uh, at the yeah i think i'm in a happy medium spot right now i think we've had some i think you are too like we had two barrels in each of those roads yeah. the entrances this summer we only have one at each right now for the winter so it was only two yeah. barrels yeah. and we're only emptying them twice a week so we'll see what that volume is and like at, at pine point instead of going from 12 barrels in the parking lot we go down to like six yeah and so um yeah, I think it, it it's proven at Pine Boy, and I think we have some good results. And and again, we I goes without saying we couldn't do without the residents that walk and do the yeah. grab the bucket and help pick up or the like you go and yeah. walk. I mean, there is still trash. There was just there's all there was always trash, even yeah. with the barrels. So that's really not the, yeah. It's I think people are more cognizant now to help yeah. out a little more or be a little more responsible. Yeah. yeah. We still had some issues with some of the to-go stuff. Pizza boxes are still a challenge. And I think people are better though. I think the associations have helped out. And I think at Pine Point, it's really it's it's the parking lot. And so they've done it for three years now. So it's not a actually four. So um yeah, yeah. no, I think I think trash we're getting there. I think Roger deserves a ranger badge. Yeah. Yeah. No kidding. Yeah. yeah. Ranger danger. <laughs> um, That's his nickname at the beach. Ranger danger. Yeah. Uh, so we'll kind of look at the dog stuff and get that back to you. We can chat a little more about that in January. And then yeah. again, we really need things put in place to council in, in March. Yeah. And make some to make that kind of change. Yep. Does it make sense to invite someone to? Rick's point from the dog group for like 10 minutes to the meeting. Yeah, I could. I'm happy to reach out to like uh, the Foley's and they're the leaders of that group and just to say to both of them, say, okay, you know, here's what we're hearing. Here's a path we'd like to take. How do we work together to resolve this? And so we want to have a conversation. Mm -hmm. And so um, I can, I'm happy to start that offline because um, when I've called them and said, hey, you got people with their dogs all over the turn track and I get, we don't want to, you know, we don't want to have to worry about the Memorial Park or on the athletic fields. And so they get right on Facebook and pop something out there. And again, it may be somebody from another town or just visiting. So it's like we can only control what we can control. But again, I feel better when I know our residents are behaving and then we'll deal with the, the other stuff as it comes. And most people, when you go up to them, be like, hey, your dog needs to be on a leash. I'm like, oh, I'm so sorry. You know, most people, right? It's, yeah. it's the five percent you're never gonna. Yeah, yeah, you're, yeah. you're right. <laughs> you know, so uh, yeah, that's good. Thank you. We'll move on to seven and hot committee report. Anything? Oh yes. Yeah, if you well, um, we're kind of cruising along with it here. Um, Util has done a great job with just kind of guiding the process and. Um, presenting to us a number of options that they've uh seen i guess work in other you know in other communities that have that's falling in line with what we've seen in our surveys and so we're trying to you know do our best to narrow everything down and um you know eliminate the pools from the equation totally just kind of I'm like, you see i'm like i'm like yeah so now the um you know we're trying to you know, work through the style of pools that we go with you know with a comp competition side and the rec side and what is, what do those two look like or you know are they two separate bodies of water or you know um what is the fitness facility like? What does a fitness room look like for us? What kind of uh, multi-use spaces do we want to have? And you know, who are they going to serve? Um, do we want to have a you know an actual uh, you know fitness space for training and you know lifting and cardio, and or do we want to leave that to some of the area providers like Foley's and other spaces that already have those um, and or are they missing a demographic that we could capture within the community center? And, um, you know, are there uh, partnerships? Yeah, right. Other partnerships that we can include or, or bring in for lease space and, um, 
and kind of, uh, you know, utilize some of the areas in there. And, you know, are there groups, school groups or activities that aren't being met in some of the spaces like the library, you know, which is over, you know, overused at this point and, and, and out of room. And, you know, I wasn't at that meeting that the library held, um, but, uh, you know, the feedback was that it was very productive, um, got a lot of good information out of it. Um, and the library seems, you know, the, the folks associated with the library are very, you know, excited to, to hear about how the community center can kind of take a little bit of that load off of them. Um, and we can kind of work together on um, accommodating all the, the different users within the community. Yeah, they were very receptive to, we had a we had about an hour meeting with them, just finding out, knowing that if we had a community center and a library upgrade, what could, what fits more in our wheelhouse and what fits more in there. So right. they were trying to meet needs that were met. Kudos, right? right? But if both things can and function <clears throat> together. So that was a good, you know, they're really the new um, uh, director over there, Chip. Um, Schrader. Schrader, yeah, Chip Schrader, thank you. Um, his, his really statement was, if it's educational enrichment, we really want to be the leader in it. Yeah. Other than that, we'd love to partner and how do we support you doing everything else? So yeah, I mean, there's a whole bunch of different, you know, elements of the community center in terms of, you know, what does it look like when you walk into the space and how does it feel? And and you know, is it more of a gathering space or more of a check-in space to get into your, you know, into your programs and um how how does everything flow where's the indoor track and how does that actually function is that a part of the you know the multi-use court space and how many how many courts do you want to have in there and what you know what groups are we accommodating is it indoor pickleball or um you know volleyball basketball are there indoor um, racket sports that are attached to that um you know, you you know events. Yeah, right. I mean, right. What kind of flooring, sir? You know, what kind of flooring are you going to have in there that doesn't get damaged when mm -hmm. you do? You know, open it up to you know major events. Is it you know your traditional um, you know hardwood or is it uh, more of a you know poured in place rubber or something along those lines? So, um, you know, and and we're gonna we're trying to work. You know, we're gonna go check out some facilities um, as a group and and see what other places look like and you know how that feels to the to the committee and if that's you know we want to take away some of those aspects of those of those facilities and bring them into into what we're doing and um, provide all that feedback to UTL they're doing a lot of the heavy lifting for us you know we're just kind of you know providing a lot of feedback to them as to, and, and what they're presenting to us and then um, once we've kind of put together the bones of what the community center is going to be in terms of its um, programs. Yeah, so program is the space. So that's yeah. how the architects talk mm -hmm. about it. Programming space and then activities that happen in the building program. Right. Then we're gonna, uh, you know, we're gonna start evaluating, evaluating sites and the size of the sites. You know, how many acres do we need? Um, parking size and. Um, you know, are there any outdoor facilities attached to the community center? Uh, community center, and what do those look like? Do they enter, you know, inter uh, or interchange with the, you know, indoor? Can it be an indoor outdoor, you know, multi use space to hold events that way? Um, there's a real, there's a lot of really neat designs that are out there right now, and UTL's got a, a ton of experience and uh, resources to kind of provide us some pretty pretty cool cutting edge um, opportunities to to make this a really really nice facility that's multi-use but not multi-use enough where you you lose its actual um, service so but it's coming i mean we're it's moving pretty quick but it's you know they've got a really what's nice is that you know we have somebody guiding us and yeah, so yeah, they're, they're giving doing, a format so we just plug and play yeah, right and so so we're not relying on the committee to do like a ton of legwork so they can move quicker because you have a consultant in, in, involved sure. in, the, in the operation so Sound um, a little bit like what they did with the ad hoc uh, yeah. police and fire station. I mean, so they well, really had the same. Thing. I mean, they're meeting. We're meeting twice a twice a month right now. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And so it's, we they it's, also have the information with the prior. Yeah. They got a ton of research that's already been done. All the surveys. Oh yeah, from the last yeah. time. Like we don't need to reinvent the wheel. Right? Yeah, we right. already have all yeah. the yeah. And, and all the information is the same every single time, right? So it's not there hasn't been a whole lot of change there. So they're just taking and, and, and yeah. putting all that together and saying, here's. Here are the options you can yeah. do. How do we want to? This is what do we key. want to do? This is the biggest. If anything's going to be successful, this is the key to get people out to the seventh to provide yeah. feedback of the activities. Because 
they're giving us of all the opportunity and we're kind of shaping it. But having people come and tell you how many, you know, what they want to see have happen in it, mm -hmm. then they can design that facility space wise. If all of a sudden we get, you know, um, you know, 300 people that want to do uh, pickleball, you know what I mean? Then it's like, okay. But then it's the committee's job to be able to say, okay, but how do we, how do we divest, you know, our portfolio here to say, okay, we can do that, but we can run eight pickleball and you can get 50 people playing an hour for three hours a day. Then what else happens in that schedule and that sort of stuff. But yeah, I think their, their minds are open. I mean, they're, they're giving us ideas about the socialization and like, you know, can we have a, a coffee shop that we lease that makes money to pay for it yet it's connected to outside stuff where like he's like well, you know community gardens you're talking about redoing imagine if they were outside the door and you could hold the class in the classroom and walk out to the like <laughs> that total connection of 360 so um yeah no it's it's good work so we've got this event the night doing the tours um uh and, and alex doesn't even know this and the rest of the community doesn't know this but we've met with util today and um I think the plan is, and Patrick's kind of mulling it over right now, but I think that we're going to do this meeting, at least our next meeting on Monday. Unfortunately, I can't be at that. Yeah, okay. <laughs> next meeting on Monday, um, prepping for this and then doing the tour on the 9th. And I think the goal then may be to pause it till January 18th to get through the holidays and let some of the school stuff settle out to be able to, you know, we don't want to be tone deaf to what's going on. But yeah, we but we also want to keep this moving so we don't lose momentum, and and we don't know is the school coming back next November is school coming back twenty twenty five like who knows, we just need to be ready, and who knows what other opportunities I mean, if some parcel pops in our lap and says hey you know I want to give this to free for the town I want to be ready to say we've done the work you know we need a footprint that's three and a half acres and that every field is an acre and every playground as a quarter acre like so okay if somebody gave us six acres what can you do with it you know and and then the nice thing about util they've got uh, three other two other consultants with them um weston and samson and uh ballard and kane and they're good i mean yes. they're 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 top shelf and once we get kind of this program activity set then they're going to come back and say okay to run that program and run those activities it's going to cost you x here's how much it costs to build and how much it costs to operate. And if either of those things don't feel good, then that's where the ad hoc committee, that's where their real work starts to say, okay, you know, oh yeah, we want 10 lane swimming pool, lap pool, and we want a therapy, pool, I mean, a rec pool. Well, we were told the rec pool makes more money than a lap pool. You know what I mean? And so I think that's a priority, but we know we need to serve this group. So maybe we go down to six lanes because less space to build, less cost to build. And then it's a, Two thirds of the operating cost. Like, you know, those yeah, are the choices that yeah. you guys will have to make down the road to make it feasible and something that's palatable. They have all the great comparisons of, of, yeah, what is, you know, the, the cost of to build and then the cost to, and the, the revenue that you're going to generate from each one of those activities. So it's really, really done, great. Done well what it, has the talk been within your, your group and town with the uh, school being, uh, well, I mean, the, the, here's the thing is I and I and I admit this fully. The school we know is a need. Whatever that, whether that's renovation for school, come back with another unified school. I can't, I'm not blind to, even though I'm passionate about what we're doing here, it's still a need. There's something that needs to happen. I, I don't disagree. I'm just asking yep. is it gonna be too soon to bring it up next November? Well, that's what we we're kind of waiting to see. Karen's in a workshop right now. Yeah, she, she's at the right. school yeah. workshop, yeah. and then we've got our, our build. Karen, yeah. We've got our school build committee that I'm on on the 28th. We'll kind of see what they're thinking because, again, there's a lot to every piece, and the education piece and the community input was the challenge. So um, I think giving us to getting through the stuff we've already committed to do, UTL's on board for taking a little hiatus. They'll keep doing their work in the background. Um, the hiatus being over the holidays. Yeah, because we were going to. What meet... is the timeline of like? Is, will things be ready to go to ballot in November? In so that's... as of today, UTL is still committed to getting us a lesser of a package. Maybe not all the fancy stuff, but if we still want a number, they can get us a number in April, like we were talking about getting. Wow. You know what I mean? Even if even if we drop down to meeting every three weeks to give us more time because people are asking for the packets and they want to, they want to, 
to do the packets that they're doing that are they're so dense to do that every two weeks. Yeah. I mean, I get out of the meeting, I go do the I go do the minutes, and then I'm just trying to set up the next agenda with Patrick because I gotta have it posted by Thursday for next Thursday. It's like it's a it's right. it's a wheel. And so having that third week in between, we talked about that today, like getting us a chance to be able to send in information we still could get it and then you know go down that road of um I'm still going to press hard to kind of keep things moving. We don't know. We don't know. And so getting through the end of January will kind of give us a deeper piece. Um, yeah. You know, if we finish this project, you probably could shelf it for a year and pull it back off without little effort, kind of touch up your numbers and that sort of stuff. But much longer than that, it comes irrelevant. Mm -hmm. New demographics, new boards, new committees, new residents, yeah. the, you know, the choice changes. And so it's, you don't have, and so, I mean, Knock on wood, we don't get to a point where it's like, okay, we're we're pushing the pause button completely if, if things go off the rail. Yeah. But there could be other things that happen. Maybe it's a four school and we're looking at a four school which is, needs a smaller site and we put a community center with that. Maybe one of these developers says, Hey, a lot longer than yeah. right. But, but maybe, so then we could maybe one of these developers says, Hey, I, I need to do some community good in my application and I'm gonna give you four acres in my development. You know what I mean? There, there's a lot of potential like so we need to be ready for what comes at us. So, yeah, but the site, like what you guys are talking about, it's more than four acres. I'm, I'm sure. Uh, they're talking minimum footprint with parking is like three and a half. Three you, and a half acres? Yeah. yeah. Minimum. 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 What about at the Downs? There was some agreement. That's gone to the. Because we let the time pass too long? Well, it's almost the spring will be five years um, as far as that kind of. They promised to hold land, they never promised to give land. And that's what we're kind of dealing with the school. No, no, I th I, when I first got on this committee, it sounded like they were giving us no, land yeah, if no. we built it. No. Of no. course they wouldn't. No. So, yeah. <laughs> so it's, it, and that's kind of always been the illusion, a lot of what, you know, it's like, no, we'll give you a, you know. <laughs> well, that's interesting. That is the uh, um, I know. So waiting for the nuts and bolts of how much. And yeah. So I what, think, I think. Yeah. The, I mean, our, right. I mean, we're not even, we aren't even diving into like right now, we're just kind of trying to construct the An facility. Educate, right. Yeah. yeah. And yes, get yeah. what's yeah. going into it and come up with that final number. Yes. And then we'll, and then it's kind of out of the uh, ad hoc committee's hands right. at that point. Yeah. yeah. But there are, you know, hopefully there are other opportunities to, to finance something like that, that doesn't impact the taxpayer as much. Right. There could be some right. alternative ways to yeah, do that grants so like things. in terms of like trying to align it with the school right the school is a huge number that mm -hmm. i think really hurt <laughs> right it hurt a lot in, in terms of how to get that support so yeah. if you're if these two things are going on the same path perhaps the community center isn't as much of an impact and they could happen along the same time frame i you don't know we well, gotta, no. we gotta figure out how that would this why you're yourself. looking at two ways of going you know well, a big one and a smaller yeah. one Time. Even if you just came up with with a swimming pool with uh, eight ten lanes and 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 the other part of it, yeah. and, and then buy enough land that you can build around it. The challenge uh, with a facility when you start talking holistically, it's an environment. It's you know things linked. You you know your fitness room, even if it's small, still brings a certain demographic in to buy a membership mm -hmm. or your pool, like you know rec pool versus the lap pool. There's certain the package it's yeah. a package to be able to say okay uh, now i can charge you know 40 dollars a month for somebody to come and the whole family comes like it makes makes sense as a one-stop shop and meeting yeah. space and those type of things there's a lot of like if, if it's not a universal effect like if it's just swimming i don't think it supports itself it may be a, a sound good yeah. but yeah, it, it, yeah. You, you send your kids to go swim, and then you or you sit there you, and your significant them. or your other kids, you go shoot hoops or you go yeah. exercise no, no, I, over I, here. Or you go you do like homework you in the lobby or whatever like it is. It's you know. So we got to keep it on the rails as long as we can. And I, and I agree with Alex. I think there's opportunity. I think that we just all have to realize that again, school is a school is a need. This is a want, but it's a priority want based on everything we know from the community, and so. It just can't do this. It's how do we run it till we get a path that we can say, okay, you know, and again, there may be opportunities, maybe block grants, there may be different things. And again, this will generate revenue to offset some of those things. We've got two more agenda items and we're almost out of time. Yeah. So um, let's go over nominations. So I'll just give you the quick, I did chat with Tony. 
um, people that are up for terms, which will be receiving a letter, Trish and Emily and Amanda. Do I think Amanda filled one, didn't you? I filled the second alternate spot. Which was but, already a going one, I think. Right, and then I was never clear whether I technically moved into a first alternate So, spot. So right now, yes. Yeah, so I we do have I a new know. member. Her name is Patricia Kafka. Okay. So you are first alternate. Okay. She would be second. Okay. She couldn't be here this evening. She'll be here next meeting. Um, the three of you, yourself, Trish, and Emily, will be receiving letters from Tody saying, hey, would you like to re-up? And then that goes to the appointments committee. Um, no reason not to from our end. So it should be a, yeah. you know what I mean? Um, and then once that slate is reset, then usually in January, we take nominations and holds okay. for uh, leadership. Um, so, uh, and again, we don't know. They picked vice chair and chair of the council last night. So it's uh, uh, Nick McGee yeah. and Abel Sider's vice chair. And so then I think next meeting they said, who, okay, who's in charge? Who's our liaison? Is Karen still a liaison? Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So we find that out next meeting and then be able to move forward there. So that's the update on... So that's not, a January item. That's a January item. Yep. Um, uh, confirming the meeting dates. These are right there on your agenda. Those are the ones we picked last meeting that I think yep. everybody was yep. good. Yep. The second Thursday. Second Thursday. Um, I, I've shared those with the town clerk to make sure those are all up to date. Mm -hmm. yep. um, and then again, if there's something that pops up in between, you guys always have the right to add an off meeting or a work group or whatever comes up there. Um, are those going to conflict with any of our other needs? You know, I don't think so. When I looked, I think we're there. I don't remember where we're how we're falling in line. <laughs> we're first and third, and this is second. <laughs> okay. So you've got something three Thursdays a month. I have one every first third, so I can't be at that because yeah. I have my parks commission meeting yeah. for this event. Right, and so that's good to know because again, if we yeah. we change this ad hoc committee to go every third week, I think it'll help a little bit, and I'll make sure we yeah. run it off of this one, so it's a different. So for the next meeting, because we always were debating about yep. agenda items, so we're going to talk about the beach, but the other thing I heard was sort of the neighborhood things. So there yeah. were a lot of ideas that were community partnership, community so. partnership that were tossed out today. So maybe we could have more specific like action plan on that. Like if Skip, is that his name? I'm sorry, Steve. Yeah, Steve. Oh. Steve oh, is going nice. to the schools. Yeah. Can we have the dates that he's yeah. going to the so schools? I can get so any you can then say, I can go or I can go. I can get community action. I can send in the group and invite you to say, you know, kind of do an email. Hey, would you like to join us and put it out there? Right. I think for next meeting, we could pull um, in our master plan. It has the areas of town that are kind of identified. And yeah. maybe we say, okay, awesome. we've got there's there's nine of us in staff right and break it into nine groups right and okay there's 16 groups or some have to be combined we'll take you know right. nine and ten and make it a group and so people know and maybe right on our website says hey you know here's your email contact address person there. yeah right. you know um you don't have any part any part friends no we have no friends of nothing nothing no 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 friends of um so yeah that would be a good a good topic item I think um, let's be more specific on talking about the beaches again. Remind me what we were, we were talking dogs, the strategy of the dogs, comparing the, what the other stand, okay. right, okay. other so, rules and regulations in the other. Okay, so that's what I, I, I'm listening because I'll read when I do the minutes and remind myself. But so it's just strategy and reaching yeah. out to the dogs group were my two action items. Yeah, barely bring back to you. Yeah, yeah. and, and the, the other towns. Yeah, the other, other bringing what other towns are doing to for us to be able to talk about. Yeah, but I will reach out. The second item was for me to reach out to the dogs group and say, "Hey, we're having this conversation." Are like those you, the two like biggest you, issues that you're finding? Yeah, dogs I'd like you and, to be part of it. Okay, and money. If you want, right? I can check with Glennis because she's she's gone to every town, so I'll see what she yeah, has. Yeah, see what she has to share. And, and so, how share. they collect their money, like the actual technology. Yeah. And the fees. Oh, mm -hmm. as far as fee structures. Yeah. 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 Don't you want to know that? Like, it would be interesting. I know we have the internet thing. Yeah. But... Yeah. So those would be the three things. Dog rules, reaching out to the dog group, fees. Yeah. Um, and the only other thing that's not on the agenda, and we don't have to do it tonight, but you should give it some thought um, before our adjourns. Um, there are copies somewhere. I mean, copies. I'm trying to read them. It was in uh, oh, everybody should have open um, the ad hoc open oh, yeah. space. Yeah. So that is a new ad hoc committee that's being formed. They're going to look at open space, and they've asked for volunteers from each one of our 
pre-established committees. Um, so like today, my Parks and Conservation Land Bond Group selected a member of our group to be, we just put her on, they voted amongst themselves and picked somebody, or mix on that. So we picked, somebody, we picked somebody today to fill that group because the Conservation Commission just approved this and they picked their members. So Jessica's on the board, so she's with it. So we add that to our agenda today. So they'll be looking from somebody from this committee to represent us on this task force. This is a, I asked uh, Jamie Fitch today. She said it's probably a once a month, probably about a nine month commitment for, for, for this. So if there's anybody that's interested um, backtracking to yes. the last thing we talked about. Yeah. Are there any of those tasks that the board can help you do? So that is not just you. Doing right, all exactly. Yeah. I mean, I think if you have a lot of stuff going on, I it, know. It's true. That's, That's right. Yeah. If you guys, if I take care of the communication and reaching out to the, the PTAs and the dog group, if you guys amongst yourselves could divvy up towns to look at, yeah. Like if somebody says, I'll take OV, I'll take Cape, I'll take. Yeah. And bring those rules back. Maybe we build a Google Doc yeah. and share yeah, those things. Like Something like that. Yeah, no, oh. that's a great idea. Yeah. I don't, you shouldn't just fall on you. So. Yeah, yeah. And we've been involved with that. Let them know. No, I just told what's that? Oh, he may that have that. Whatever she has, I'll send to him. Yeah, and then we can we can send it out on the group. But I, yeah, I think that if there's any help and kind of one, you're educating yourself along the way too. So it's a little more absorption, mm -hmm. and then um, that's our job is to help. Yeah. Right, yeah. exactly. Yeah. That's why I was sort of meeting by action yeah. items, like. Yeah. What can we actually yeah. start to do? Yeah. So I think, yeah, I think collecting that data would be huge and looking at both things. If when you pick a community, grab dog rules and grab fees. Like right. I'm taking, you know, I'll take do a little bit. Or how are yeah. we gonna when are we gonna divvy those? How um, by email? Is that what you said? Uh yeah, I don't know. Can I mean send in I'll take Kate. I was gonna there. say, can we very Trust me, I want to go too. But uh, if we could right now just say, what are the towns we want to look at? We could easily do the that. one for the beach is Cape. Yeah, it's insane. Um, hope our South, South Portland, because you've got Willard. Saco, Bitterford. Saco, Bitterford. 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 Yeah, I would go. Yeah, I would go. Yeah, Oh yeah, Okay, so you're Yeah, I would get those ones too. Okay, so dog, dogs and. Feeds. 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 Yeah. Okay. And how yeah. they collect them. Yeah. yeah. So I, I'll do Cape. I mean, um, I just took a quick look at South Portland dogs. Yeah. And it's pretty standard. Right. Right. That's something that would take a lot of time. Yeah. Yeah. I'll do, I could do, do you want to, I can do Cape and South Portland. Yeah. Yeah. That's fine. I may not be as involved in this one just because of the Yeah. 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 No worries. Right. Okay, so so I'm just, I gave good. everybody else work right there. So yeah. <laughs> I delegated. <laughs> so we have Kenny Bunk, South Portland, Cape. Back a bit OB, there. we need somebody to do. All right. Um, do we want to... And remember, too, we've got um, Patricia and Emily. We can. Oh, yeah, that'd be good. You want to ask? We could actually, might be a nice thing to ask. Uh, they missed the uh, meeting. I think they're assigned. They volunteered. They volunteered. Well, it might be a good way to engage Patricia for the first time. She... <laughs> what do you got? Seven towns there listed? One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, that's great. One more we need. Yeah. York. Should we yeah. want York? Yeah, York's a, what yeah, about the north of the city? Is there anywhere? We there isn't anything, really. No, you get it. Falmouth has no beaches. Guys. There's no well, beaches. You got a gunk aggressive, a gunk too. So. What is oh, a gunkwit. You're right. York and Dunk, but they're pretty progressive in their rules. So, do Kenwell? you want to charge Patricia as the chair to look into a Gunkwood and York? Yeah, Wells would be somewhere. Oh, yeah, there. or Gunkwood and Wells. Or do you want me to reach out to her? York could I don't be know. one, and then a Gunkwood and Wells. Maybe okay. One. All right, I'll reach out to her. Oh. I think they just closed one of the beaches to dogs. Really? Rick, were you offering to do Old Orchard Beach in Kittery? That's what I just heard. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> do we Sorry, want to build a spreadsheet? I was to. just giving a comment. Yep. Do we want to build a spreadsheet? Yeah, I yeah. think that'd be easy. Yeah. It's pretty much just if you do like a big Fish. sheet, then people could Why don't you have a little uh, yes. demo to us? I will. I'll do this. And, yeah, and then uh, then we can get back to you what we have for information. Perfect. And That's and fine. Yeah. I'll set up a Google sheet and I'll just drop it in when you guys, I'll share it with you, but I'll have, drop it in when I you have, have yeah, any more see Emily on, I mean, um, yeah, Emily on everything. And then she can put it in the drive and share yeah, it. Yeah. She's good at yeah. pushing yeah, that yeah, out. Yeah. Um, so you let me know before we all start doing all this work, what your wife has. 
Yeah, yeah she'll be sent. I mean, yeah, what she, it's all public. Right, what she has, but, yeah, but when, it was, she, when it was gathered, too. Yeah. Right. Yeah. To make sure it's current, this stuff has changed pretty quick. Yeah. Um, before we go, is anybody interested in this? That's what we did in our last meeting. And, and the, uh, what the hell am I holding up? The, <laughs> Isn't oops, that us? The ad hoc um, <laughs> open space committee. Is, that, is there any interest in that? Yeah. <laughs> you might want to put your hand down. Your mother was getting ready to get you. <laughs> I might be. Okay. If no one does, I'll. Yeah. So, yeah. I'm not, I don't know when they're going. And so my only caveat is if they decide and we get a memo or I get a memo that says, hey, we need a nomination by January, then I'll send something out digitally and you guys can figure that out amongst yep. yourselves. So it's going to be good. Cool. Yeah. Interesting. All right. Uh, just before for officers, we don't need to do anything right now, but Trish, are you still interested in chairing? Oh, <laughs> The last time we talked about everyone moving up one, right? Yeah. Emily said she's interested in anything. She told me to tell you that. Yeah. Okay. And you need a recording secretary. To, Boy, she's so. good at that. She is. Emily is good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So think about it. We'll, we're going to try to vote next meeting. So. Great. Okay. Anyone have anything else? My granddaughter played soccer this season. She had a great time. She loved Coach Alex. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> nice. Yeah, it uh, ran very well. She's a kindergartner, five years old. So oh, she wow. Just had a ball. Love that age. She didn't play, but she <laughs> hey. did like the environment. Yeah, right. Right. I Kids hope you took ever. videos. As long as she can run around and have fun, that's yeah. great. Right. She there and she had fun. Yeah. Yeah. I went by there one. Yeah. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. And the damn place was just.